sure as you join in, tell us who you are, where you're from, what you're doing, what's what summer looking like, feeling like, sounding like for you right now. Um, we will remember all those comments, every single comment. So if you like what I'm saying, you could comment on that. If you don't like what I'm saying, you disagree, you can comment on that as well. We take both um, likes and dislikes and all of them are entered to win um, some real VIP swag. So are y'all ready to get started? All right, so remember, oh, I haven't forgot to mention, if you're new to the show, uh, at the very end, I answer one of these random real questions from this book. And um, you guys will choose a number and there's 300 questions in each of the books. And so I'll choose the one that's most appropriate to answer live <laughs> from one of those books according to the number that gets chosen. So that's at the very end. It's definitely not uh, part of the real conversation. It's just like a fun way to end the show. And uh, we've been having a lot of fun with that as well. All right, so we're gonna get started. One of the books that I've been reading um, I've been reading this book, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. If you haven't read this, sorry, I have sticky notes all over the place. I am a sticky note girl. Um, if you haven't read this book, I highly recommend it, especially if you're a woman. Uh, I feel like it's a very empowering book for women. However, if you're a man, I totally suggest you read this too because if you have daughters or I just think men need to understand like, how women need to feel. And then the, the message I'm going to be talking about today is not just for women. I think this is for all people. And I also think this is for educators, particularly, because educators really, really, really need to grasp some of the things that Glennon talks about in this book. And the premise of the book is based upon, um, she tells a story at the onset, I don't want to tell the whole book, but she talks a little bit about this tamed cheetah in a zoo. And um, the whole idea of it is becoming untamed and, and remembering that you, like, you are a cheetah, right? You were born for great things. You were meant for great things. But for some reason, the world puts, and I'm just using that super vaguely, but puts these parameters on us that are so tight and that are so restricting that we almost forget that we are a cheetah. We almost forget who we really are. And I don't know, there's just so much about this book that resonates with me. And I'm just like, yes, that's me. For example, before I go into the quote, yesterday I posted a picture on my um, my regular personal page, well, my page, whatever page that is, the Tara M. Martin page. And um, I posted a workout picture, right? And of course, right after you work out, like you're so big, right? I don't know. That's how it is for me. So it was like a fun one. And I was bent over, hunched over, took this picture. Anyways, I am so excited about how strong I've gotten over the last six months. And it's empowering to me. It is encouraging to chase the next PR and to keep keep racing for that. I'm not competing against the athletes that could, I work out with. Good grief, they're like insanely strong. But I'm competing against myself and I love it. And it's such a challenge, but it's so rewarding at the same time. It's just like my personal thing that I go to that just gives me that extra um to make it through the day and to make it through all the things that life throws at me. So I posted this picture with a Glennon Doyle quote because I'm kind of obsessed with her right now. And I got these strange comments in my in my DMs. So it wasn't necessarily strange, and I'm not going to call you out on here. No worries if you're listening. But um, one of them, particularly, there were there were several positive ones, but this like a couple of the negatives. You know, the negatives always stand out. That's just the way it works. But a couple of negative ones that stood out was just like you're starting to look like a man. You looked better before. Um, that's the one that really stood out to me and kind of almost makes me like mad and angry, but it also reminds me of what Glennon's talking about in this book. We have, as a society, placed this parameter on people and made them to believe that they have to fit into a certain mold or a certain this or a certain that. This is wrong and this is right and this is inappropriate and this is manly and this is womanly. 
And it doesn't matter. It, the question was never asked, like, how does that make you feel? Are you feeling stronger? Are you feeling empowered? No, it wasn't that. It was like, you look more, you look manly now and you looked better before. Well, first of all, I didn't ask for their opinion. <laughs> and then secondly, they, others don't get to decide what's great for you. Others don't get to decide what's best for you. Same as a teacher. And when I'm talking to you as educators, you don't get to decide how a student rejuvenates. We don't get to decide what their passions are. We don't get to decide what they believe and how they want to pr proceed with life. No, we, we don't get to put those parameters on people because they're cheetahs. They aren't made to be put into a cage. They are made to run wild and free and to do what they do best. And I don't know that it's just so crazy how we do that in our world. And I won't say how I responded because it was very similar to that. It was just like, wait a second, you don't get to decide, you know, what's beautiful to you may not be true and beautiful to me. And so that's one of the quotes that I pulled out today to talk about what is true and beautiful. And I love this passage. I'm just going to read it real quick. We have a few minutes. I'm just going to read this one little passage. And then I want us to think about as personally and professionally, what is true and beautiful to you and, and for you and for your life. And then I would love for us to think about it as an educator who is influencing our future, who is empowering or limiting our future the kids what is true and beautiful to them and letting them have that power to decide what that is without us putting limiters on them so this passage man i had it marked oh here we go she talks about i'm just going to read it to you but she, it's really quick but she talks about we're all bilingual and i was like what i'm not bilingual but she says we're all bilingual we speak the language of indoctrination but our native tongue is the language of imagination. When we use the language of indoctrination with its shoulds and shouldn'ts, right and wrong, good and bad, we are activating our minds. Our minds are excuse makers. Our imaginations are storytellers. So instead of asking ourselves what is what, right or wrong, we must ask ourselves what is true and beautiful. I love that. I don't know. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say over in the comments, but I love that idea because what is true and beautiful to me might be different than what is true and beautiful to you, but all need to be respected and all need to be valued and all need to be appreciated. And I just, there are so, I mean, Melissa says that's a mic drop. I agree. There's so many mic drop moments in this book. I love it so much. But that is just one thing that just really gave me goosebumps. And it made me think, um, you know, if we really want to empower our learners to go out and to be their real self and to embrace their real identity and to do what they were born to do, to be the cheetahs they were born to be, we have to adopt this mentality of what is true and beautiful to you asking them and letting them proclaim that and believing in it with them instead of telling them that they have to fit inside a mold that some man created some woman created some human created for them because that's not what was meant to be and and that's what untamed to me is all about it's about unleashing who you really are and being that to the fullest extent of your being and, and really living a fulfilling life. Um, at the end of that chapter, she says, um, we need to remember and unleash this life-changing, relationship-changing, world-changing power of our own imaginations. Because really, if you think about it, when we were kids, we were very imaginative. And somehow that stuff got squashed out. I don't know how or why or when, but I really think it was all these limitations that got put upon us, all these opinions that got thrown at us. Like you looked better before, like you shouldn't do that anymore. Well, guess what? I'm not going to stop. 
And, and the reason I'm not going to stop because I know who I am. Right. And I know what makes me feel true and beautiful, but here she goes on. It might take us a lifetime. And luckily a lifetime is exactly how long we have. Let's conjure up from the depths of our souls, the truest, most beautiful lives we can imagine, the truest, most beautiful families we can fathom, the truest, most beautiful world we can hope for. Let's put it all on paper. And she basically says, let's make the invisible order become visible. I, y'all, that's just kind of what's on my mind right now. And it's kind of like, I actually got to feel this message a little bit yesterday with those comments. Um, and it just made me think like that is what we do as society. Um, there's so many times we just push our opinions on other people and we actually stifle their growth and we cause them to believe that what they imagined to be true and beautiful isn't real. And, and the truth is, it's just the opposite. That's real. And what we're pushing on them is fake because we're making them fit inside a box that they were never meant to fit inside of. We're making them be caged up, right? And we're not allowing them to run free. So yeah, Whew. I feel like this is like a little sermon, but honestly, if you haven't read this book, I highly recommend it. Every page <laughs> throughout it is highlighted or sticky note, you saw the sticky note sticking out of it. It's very empowering. It reminds me of just being real, honestly. It, it just reminds me again that it's important that we stay true to who we really are. So I'm going to look over here and see what you guys have to say. <laughs> this is kind of deep. I know I need to lighten these up a little bit. Last week was deep. This week was deep. Sorry. Um, I haven't gotten to the Alicia Keys chapter yet. I love her though. I'm super excited. Um, this is a great book. I feel... Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so thank you so much for joining. Uh, this has just been on my heart. I thought about it as an educator, and I think we have the opportunity to change our world. We have the opportunity to put this message of what is true, asking our learners what is true and beautiful, and allowing them to experience that. We we have a unique opportunity that I think other professions don't really have because we are literally educating our future. And it doesn't matter if we're in the house of a schoolhouse a building or if we are in our homes learning remotely. I'm teaching remotely today. I'm talking remotely today. And guess what? It's still having an impact on people. So we can do this. We can help our learners embrace and become untamed cheetahs that they were meant to be. We can do this. And I think it's our duty to do this too. I mean, it's a tall order, but not really. It's almost releasing control. It's releasing that belief system, that indoctrination that we have in our head, that it that is the only way and that's the best way. And so, yeah. It's just kind of my thoughts today. Uh, let's see, we have a few comments over here. While you are listening or commenting, please do drop a number one to 300 over in the comments. Um, just any number, any random number. I'm going to choose a question and answer it. And this is always the most scariest part of this show. But I love it too. I like the suspense, but I also get really nervous about it. But uh, drop a number over there while we're reading some of these comments. So as... Um, Educators, we need to help our students be true to who they are, especially those middle schoolers. Exactly. You know, middle schoolers were on my heart when I got that message yesterday. I thought about that and I thought, man, I've worked hard to, you know, gain. I'm not really working on gaining muscle. It just happened. You know, like right after you work out, you're just pumped. And so it's just a great time to take a picture of big muscles, right? But that's not, that wasn't my end goal. My end goal are all these personal records that I'm setting, right? And when I got that comment that ticked me off, honestly, I thought, man, if I was in my middle school self right now, I would stop doing what I love because I don't want to look like a man. And everybody thinks that I might look like a man. Everybody notice that I just put that one comment into everybody. And that's what middle schoolers do. And I think that's what children do. We're molding them. We're shaping them. We say something 
And they're like, if my teacher believes that, it must be the opinion of the whole entire world. Like, I've definitely got to adopt this opinion. And that's where I think we have a lot of power as educators to be able to help them to go back to their first language, imagination. Imagine those dreams. Imagine that what is true and beautiful to you and go and do that thing. And let me help you get there. That's that's the mindset I think we really need to have. Yes, we got to keep those cheetahs alive and uncaged and uncaged. We got some numbers coming in. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So I think it's time for our question. We've kind of gone over a little bit. Um, <laughs> well, Glenn and Doyle show and others when it's possible. I'm just keep, I'm going to stay true to who I am. Yes, I want to be an uncaged cheetah. I do not want to conform to what others believe that I should be. So we have some questions over here. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Okay, number four. Let's try number four. Gosh, please don't let it be terrible. Okay, let me try this number four. <laughs> let me see what this one is. If not, we'll go back to that one. Ooh, I like this number four better. Okay, here we go. You ready? You have an unlimited, you have unlimited money for a 24 hour vacation. Where would you go and what would you do? So you guys get to answer it too. So we have unlimited money for a 24 hour vacation. Where would you go? And what would you do? Oh my gosh, unlimited money. I don't even know how to think in those terms. But if we're unleashing what is true and beautiful, let's, let's just think, let's think big. So I think I would go, I don't know. I wanna go overseas. I wanna go out of the country. Um, also wanna go like near an ocean. And I don't know exactly the place I want to go. Somewhere beautiful, oceanside, out of the country, because I've only been out of the country once. And I want to, one thing I really want to do is skydive. I know that doesn't cost a lot of money, but I still want to do it. And so I want to do it over the ocean, because I think if I land in the ocean, I will be more safe than landing on land. <laughs> that's, that's my thoughts anyway. Um I want to do, yeah, I would eat a lot of seafood. I love seafood. So I would probably have some salmon and some mahi-mahi. I would soak my toes in the sand. I would go to fancy dinners at nighttime where you have to dress up in like formals. And yeah. And then during the day, I would just live in a bikini out on the beach. Like I don't know that I would need a ton of money to do that. Oh, I'll, another thing I would like to do is take a helicopter ride. So maybe like if we just wanted to go visit somewhere else, we just get a helicopter and just take helicopter rides. So that would kind of be like expensive, I'm sure. I can't even really think in uh, realms of a lot of money because <laughs> I just don't know. But the house I would like to stay in or the condo, I would want it to have a pool, a hot tub, um, room service. I wouldn't want to cook at all, just have food always brought to me and exact amount of my macros that I need for the day. <laughs> yeah. What are y'all thinking? <laughs> oh, the keys. Yeah. That sounds beautiful. That sounds beautiful. Travel would take most of the day. Oh, that's true. So maybe I need to go somewhere local. <laughs> Maybe I need to go somewhere local so I can get there pretty quick and enjoy the day. Um, I don't know that I would need a ton of money. I just want to go near a beach and yeah, I do want to skydive. I kind of want to parasail. I never tried that before. I just love all things near the ocean. To me, the ocean waves are just so soothing and I find that I can write for days. So you guys know I love to journal every day. I can write for days by the ocean. It's like the the sound of the waves are just my motivation. They just like fuel my soul. And so, yeah, I would love to live near the ocean one day when I retire. So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts. Anyways, whew, that wasn't too bad of a random question. The other one was a little more risky, but it's okay. We can, we can try that one next time. Someone says number four. <laughs> All right. Well, think about, thank you for joining us. Please do think about what is true and beautiful to you.
uh, in your life, in your world, in your profession, in your personal life. And, and then what is true and beautiful? Let's ask that question to our learners and let them explore and let them imagine what they dream their life to be. And then we, we need to help them set some action plans to reach those dreams because that is what will make this world just a much more beautiful place. Thank you, Glennon Doyle, for your amazing book. I'll be sharing tag her up in the comments. I don't know if she ever sees this, but um, I would love to meet her, honestly. <laughs> Maybe she could be a guest on the show one day. That would be epic. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you tuning in. Remember, if you didn't get to watch it live, it's okay. You can watch it um, on the replay. And on the replay, you still have opportunities to win real VIP swag over uh, just by commenting over in the comment section. All the comments that are uh, left there before uh, 12.01 p.m. Central Standard Time today will be entered to win those prizes. And I've been shipping them out each week. Have some more swag coming in. So I'm excited about that. Anyways, have a rocking week. Have a rocking day. And think about what is true and beautiful to you. You don't have to be caged into what society has told you um, or made you believe is your best option. You can be you. You can be real. And that's what this is all about. So have a great day. Have a rocking week. I'll see you back next Thursday. Bye, everyone. Have a great one.